Hi everyone, welcome to week two of story time. Today's theme is helping others. Is there, can you think of any ways we can help others? We could visit them, we could give them a call, you could help them bring their groceries in. There's lots of things we can do. And one of the stories is service animals. Does anybody know what a service animal is? If you have someone that cannot see, there are dogs that are trained to lead a blind person around and they're their eyes for them so they can see. Here is another one. He's leading the man so he can see. The dog is really his eyes. See, and there's another one for hearing impaired. They're trained to hear if a car is coming, if they're at railroad tracks to hear if a train is coming. So there's some of the animals that help us out. And then we can also help animals. There's a baby lamb. See, the little girl is feeding the lamb with a bottle. We could have a bird feeder in the winter time, can help feed the birds, or we could put a cob of corn out for a squirrel in the winter time. And this little boy, he's helping a horse exercise. He's going swimming with him. Be a little cold now, but maybe in the summer. And how many have gerbils or little mice? We could feed them. Or how many have dogs and kittens? You have to take a dog for a walk or play with them. And kittens love to be played with. So there's some ways that we can help the animals out. So for on our magic board today, we're going to put helping others. Okay, so we'll put that up on our magic board. And we'll start with our first book. And that is called Job Wanted. An old farm dog plodded down a dirt road, paws sore and stomach empty. When he reached a farm, he marched right up to the farmer. Do you need a dog, he asked. No, the farmer replied. Dogs just eat and don't give anything back. They're not like cows or horses or chickens that pay for their keep. Do you have an opening for a cow? The dog asked. The farmer scratched his nose. Well, sure, but you're not a cow. We'll see about that, said the dog. I'll start work tomorrow. The next morning, the dog was up before dawn. He opened the barn door and herded the cows into place. When the farmer saw all the cows ready and waiting, his eyes popped. He did the milking in jig time. When he got to the last stall, the dog said, Moo. The farmer shook his head. I'll grant you it was handy having the cows ready, but you're not a cow, so I'm afraid there's no job for you here. The dog was disappointed, but not discouraged. Do you have an opening for a horse, he asked. The farmer scraped goo off his boots. Well, sure. But you're not a horse. We'll see about that, the dog said. I'll start work tomorrow. When the farmer went to the barn early the next morning, the cows were all in their stalls ready to go. Hmm, he said. The milking went quickly, leaving time to plow the field. The farmer went out to hitch up the horse to the plow. Standing next to the horse was the dog again. The dog said, nay. The farmer frowned. I appreciate your help with the cows, but this harness won't fit you. He hooked up the plow and headed to the field. The horse trudged along at a snail's pace. The dog hurried to the garden for a bunch of carrots. He ran in front of the horse, dangling the tasty orange treats just out of his reach. Soon the farmer was running behind the horse, hanging onto the plow for dear life. The plowing was done in jig time. The farmer looked down at the dog. You're still not a cow, and you're not a horse. There's no job for you here. The dog was disappointed, but not discouraged. Do you have an opening for a chicken, he asked. The farmer fiddled with his straw hat. Well, sure, 
but you're not a chicken. We'll see about that, the dog said. I'll start work tomorrow. The farmer went to put his feet up, something he'd never been able to do before. The next morning, the dog got the cows into the barn for milking, fed the horse some carrots, then introduced himself to the hens. The chicken coop was a mess, with dirty straw everywhere and the nest boxes all a clutter. I'd better tidy it up, the dog declared. So he cleaned out the whole thing and put fresh straw in all the nests. Soon the chickens were laying eggs in their boxes, clucking happily. The dog built himself a cozy nest. Then he settled down for a nap before the farmer came to gather the eggs. As he snoozed, a fox slipped slyly across the field. The farmer was in the barn milking the cows. The fox slid behind the stable and over to the chicken coop. He reached in one furry paw to steal a chicken or an egg. The floor was clean. He reached in farther, patting until he felt a big straw nest. His paw reached up and grabbed. Bark, 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 clucked the dog, scaring the fox so badly that he shot out of the barnyard and went running for the high hills. The farmer heard the commotion and sprinted outside to see the fox. A streak of red heading south, he looked into the chicken coop. The hens were all in their places and settling down again after the foo froth. Everything was neat and tidy. Gathering eggs would be a breeze. Why, he could do it in jig time. There in the middle was the dog. It was clear who he had to thank for there being eggs and chickens at all. The dog looked at him and said, Cluck. The farmer hitched up his overhauls. I'm sorry, he said. I don't have any openings for cows. My horse position is filled. You're not quite right for chicken work, but I might have one job that just opened up. What do you think that is? Let's see. The dog looked at the farmer and wagged his tail. I'm starting to think that what this farm needs is a good dog. Do you think you can handle the job? And the dog said, Woof. So it looks like they found a happy match. The end. Okay, so we're going to stand up and we're going to do a little exercise to learn directions. Okay? So I want you to do what I'm going to show you to do. Okay, wiggle your fingers when I say go. Stop. Now do ready, set, go. Wiggle your fingers. Wiggle, 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 wiggle and stop. Next, wiggle your knees when I say go. Ready, set. Go! Wiggle your knees! Wiggle, 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 wiggle! Stop! Ready? Stomp your feet when I say go! Ready? Set? Go! Stomp your feet! Stop! Ready? The next one, wiggle your elbows when I say go! Ready? Set? Go! Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And stop. Next, when I say go, wiggle your body. When I say go, ready, set, go! Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And stop. All right, very good. You did a good job. Hey, so our next story will be one duck stuck. Uh-oh. Down by the marsh, by the sleepy slimy marsh, one duck gets stuck in the muck down by the deep green marsh. Can we count one? One. Help, help. Who can help? Two. Fish splished, splashed to the duck. No luck. He's still stuck. So let's count the two fish. One, two. Three. Moose clomp to the duck. No luck, he's still stuck. Let's count the moose. One, two, three, four. Crickets pleat to the duck. No luck, they're still stuck. Ready? Let's count the crickets. One, two, 
three, four, five. Frogs plop to the duck. No luck. He's still stuck. Let's count the frogs. One, two, three, four, five. Six skunks plunk to the duck. No luck. He's still stuck. Let's count the six skunks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Seven snails squoosh to the duck. No luck. He's still stuck. Let's count the seven snails. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Eight possums slosh to the duck. No luck, he's still stuck. Let's count the eight possums. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine snakes slink to the duck. No luck, he's still stuck. Let's count the nine snakes. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten dragonflies zing to the duck. No luck, he's still stuck. Let's count the ten dragonflies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Help, help. Who can help the duck? We can, we can. Splish, clump, pleat, plop, plunk, swoop, swoop, slink, sling. They all helped the duck who got stuck in the muck. Spluck, there he is. Looks like one, one web is out. Thanks, said the duck who got out of the muck down by the deep green marsh. The end. So we're going to make the duck for our project today. So what you have to do if you come in for it, come in, you put a little bit of scotch tape on the duck, you color the duck, and you color the mud, and you stick the stick in, and now you can make the duck unstuck out of the muck. Okay, so we'll have them at the front desk if anybody would like any. And we also have two worksheets in the front of the desk too. So in our book, I see little green creatures. I think we counted them, five frogs. So what time do you think it is? Frog song, right. Okay, so everybody stand up. How do we be good frogs? I heard you, jump, blink your eyes, and bloop, bloop, bloop. Here we go. Jump, jump, went the little green frogs one day. Jump, jump, went the little green frogs. Jump, jump, went the little green frogs one day. And their eyes went blink, blink, blink. Jump, jump, went the little green frogs one day. Jump, jump, went the little green frogs. Jump, jump, went the little green frogs one day. And their tongues went bloop, bloop, bloop. Good job. You were good frogs. Okay, so we have one more story. The Lost Dog. To Grandma, happy birthday, love Pete. Looks like he's going to try and get to his grandma's house. Pete went to see Grandma. She lived on Mutt Street. Too many cars, said Pete, and he got off the road. I don't know, was that a good idea? I think that's where he's going to get lost. Pete was lost. Look where he's at. He's out in the woods on top of a mountain. Where is Mutt Street, said Pete. That way, said the bear. That way, said the bird. That way, said the big cat. That way, said the walrus. 
That way, said the penguins. That way, said the whale. Get on my back. Looks like he's going to give him a ride. The whale gave Pete a ride. So look, he's going to get a ride on the whale. Where is Mud Street, Pete said. You are on Mud Street, said Officer Bark. And he was. Happy birthday, Grandma. He made it to Grandma's house. The end. So that was kind of a silly story, wasn't it? So what time do you think it is? Yep, I heard you. Shake your silly so everybody stand up. Here we go. Gonna shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. And wiggle my waggles away. We're gonna clap, gonna clap, clap, clap my crazies out. Clap, clap, clap my crazies out. Clap, clap. Clap my crazy sound and wiggle my waggles away. We're gonna jump, 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 jump my jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump my jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump my jiggles out and wiggle my waggles away. We're gonna yawn, yawn, yawn my sleepy sound. Yawn, yawn, yawn my sleepy sound. Yawn, yawn. Yawn my sleepies out and wiggle my waggles away. We're gonna stretch, the stretch, stretch, stretch my stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch my stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch my stretchies out. Wiggle my waggles away. We're really gonna shake. Here we go. Gonna shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. And wiggle my waggles away. And wiggle my waggles away. Yay! Good job, everybody. All right, so that concludes week number two. And I hope you'll join us all next week for week number three. Bye bye. Thank you.